Hi guys, I'm Sarah. This is my coloring book, Veronica's Garden. And today I've got for you a tutorial on how to blend and layer color. We're going to use one of the images from my book. Here it is, uh, here's an image of it, colored. And I'm gonna walk you through how I do this, this blended sky. I'm going to be using my uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. You don't have to have these pencils, but they're particularly good for this type of effect with pencil crayon. I've also got a free PDF download of this page from my coloring book. You can find that in the description in the link below. All right, I hope everyone's had a chance to grab the free PDF download from my website. So here, this is an image from my coloring book, Veronica's Garden here. This was my, this was my book. And um, this was an example of how I had colored it in the book. And what I wanted to do is show you just how I create this really nice sort of blending and movement in the sky. Um, I'm using, this time I'm using my, my favorite castles. Uh, I, got, I got, was lucky enough to have this lovely huge set of polychromos. They're especially great for, um, for this type of, for this type of coloring because of how nicely the pigments blend and layer together. And that's a lot of how I like to color because I find for me, it gives this real richness and, um, and depth to my colors. And, and to be honest, it's just, it's just a fun way to use the actual materials. So if you're really into, um, really into creating some of these effects, then this is the tutorial for you. Now, all I'm going to do is, I'm not gonna color the whole sky. All I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you on, um, on my image and I'm just gonna color. I'll probably color, just show you like a little, a little section of the sky, how I create this movement, movement and, the, and the types of colors that I use. And then you can use the same technique to create that feeling throughout your picture because it actually it takes quite a lot of time to do this, but it's a lot of fun. You'll see, you'll see how it goes. So, um, like I said, grab, grab, your, grab your PDF and um, grab your, uh, your coloring pencils. You don't have to use polychromos. It's just, for me, they're my absolute favorite. Now, first thing is, um, like I said, I'm just gonna do this little area, but I'm gonna pick out some colors first. And I always, I don't just start with one color, I always have a few colors that I'm working with. I tend to have like a bunch of pencils in my hand just because I see, I feel like I can flip back and forth between the colors. So let's, let's pick some colors. And I'm going to do a similar feel to what I did in, in this image that I've colored from my book, but not precisely. I mean, nothing's, nothing's ever the same. So I'm gonna start with some, uh, I'll start with a, uh, uh, one blue, I'm not gonna get too much blue. I'm, I'm actually mainly gonna color this, I think, purple. But I'm gonna pick a medium blue and I will also, I'll also make a note of the, the colors that I'm using in this example. So, and I'll, I'll post those in the, um, in the description below. So the first color that I've grabbed is uh, cobalt blue. Cobalt blue, here I'm making my little notes as I go. Cobalt blue 143. All right, so if you are using polychromos, these are, these are the colors that you can follow along with. Now I want mainly purple, okay? I want mainly purples in this image, so I'm gonna grab out some, some purples. Now cobalt, this is a fairly uh, neutral, uh, fairly neutral blue. So in terms of my purples, I want, the, I want this guy to be fairly warm. And I, I literally go by my, my, my feeling, but it's not overly scientific the way that I pick out colors. Anyways, here I've picked up one that I think is gonna be quite, an, another medium level of, uh, of purple. This is purple violet 136. Okay, so I'm making my little notes. Purple violet 136. So let's, uh, let's use that. And then I'll pick one other darker, like a deeper type of a, of a purple. And uh, I could pick the absolute darkest. Clearly, it's very long, so clearly it's one that I, I wouldn't use. Ooh, Delft Blue. Actually, that, that might be good. Or my other choice, 
My other choice would not, not um, whoopsies, would naturally be, my other choice would naturally be the blue violet. And I think I actually go with this. Uh, looking closer at the pigment, I think that, I think that will be, that will be nice. And it should bring out the, the blue so we get a feeling of, of nighttime. And that is, um, like I said, it's blue violet, blue violet 137. So those are my colors. Now, so those are, those are my main, the colors that I want to come through in my picture. But I need something to be contrasting that with in order to get my flowy kind of a feeling. And I'm going to use some grays and possibly a lighter blue, but let's grab the grays. Now, I could use, I, I have my choices of, depends on your color set, but I have my choices of either warm grays or cool grays. In this case, I just feel like cool grays. I, I don't know why, it's, I think it's because in my feeling, this is, a, this is the evening, things are cooling down, so I'm, I'm gonna go with cool, cool grays. And I want one that is quite, uh, quite a light tint, like this is, this is very light, what is this? This is cool, cool gray one, or cool gray one, or cool gray two, but probably, uh, uh, cool gray one is, uh, what is that, uh, 230. Cool gray one, and then I'll pick, um, I'll pick a gray that's just a little bit um, more in the middle. I don't want anything dark, but possibly just something to give me a bit more blending. Is that two? Oh yeah, that are cool gray two. I could go cool gray two or three. Oop, that's four. Maybe this is three. Three, perfect. I'm gonna take three. So I've got uh, cool gray one and cool gray and cool gray three. And so cool gray three is 232. Got my little notes. So this is, this is going to be, I think, pretty much everything that I'm going to use for this little section. And the one other thing I'm going to grab is a red, okay? I'm grabbing a red because I want one other color, or it could be an orange, I could do a deep orange, so it makes it work better. I want one other color that's, that I'm gonna have uh, a small amount of it blending in, but I, I want a little bit of a pop, right? I want a little bit of a pop because I have, the majority of what I want to come through is what I have three colors of. So blue, purple, these, these dark colors. And then I have a little bit to give my contrast, which are my, my fairly pale grays, my, my, my cool gray one and three. And then I want the one other color that's gonna give me uh, some contrast. So I could complement it with being a, a yellow, but in my case, maybe I would, you know, because it's just a portion of the sky, like I may actually, if I were coloring this whole picture, I may do the whole moon in yellow, for example, so that would complement my purples. So instead, I think I'm gonna pick just a, a, deep, a deep orange, okay? So let's have a look at our oranges. And what I'll do when I'm picking out a color um, is I'll get all of my colors together that I've already chosen, and like I said, it's not scientific. I go by my tastes. I try to test, trust my, my instincts and my tastes. And I feel like I'm like, oh, look at my colors and I'm like, okay, which of these deep kind of ready oranges do I feel the most like? And I naturally reach for this one. What is this? I've picked up, oh, red, a scarlet red. Scarlet red, so I've picked out a, a red. It's, if you have scarlet red, that is um, 118. 118 is our, our, our scarlet red. Or I would I would also have leaned towards, I mean, that's quite nice too, uh, light cad red, light cad red. I might go with, the, no, 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 I'll, I'll stick with my first instinct, my first instinct, which is the scarlet red, okay? Um, deeper reds would have been in, in this range, but I like the sort of orangey red, I think that will be. Brilliant. All right, so let, let's begin. And I do tend to like my coloring pencils to be sharp as daggers. I don't know, that's that's just me. But these are these are fairly, fairly sharp. So let's let's zoom you in. Brilliant. Okay, I think we're I think we're zoomed in. So here is how I begin doing my coloring and blending. And like I said, polychromos is just it's a complete treat to work with these colors. So I tend to have, like I said, a whole uh, little like handful of colors in my hand, and I'll start with one of the one of the purples because that is my main base color, 
and I'll go with my uh, Purple Violet 136. And like I said, I'm just gonna be working in this area here, creating, creating my, uh, my sky. Now what I'm doing is, I'm gonna ignore going through around all the details of these little, uh, these little, what do you call them, uh, fireflies. I start by creating a, a little bit of line movement. Okay, I'm getting shape with my main color and I stop there. I'm gonna do a little bit more, maybe with one of the, the blues. And I'm pressing, not hard, but, uh, and, and not light, about a medium uh, weight with my, with my pencil. Okay, because I don't want to overdo the amount of pigment that I put down, but I also don't want to underdo it. I do want to get a feel for the color. And I'm following, you see, so those are those two colors. Um, now I'm gonna move on to not the darkest purple, but a gray, okay? And I, I'm actually gonna start with my um, Cool Gray 3, that's the 232. And I'm following, see, with, with this bit of a line movement, I'm following a bit the feeling of these lines in the sky. And what I'm doing is, uh, I'm getting a little bit of this cool gray three in some areas a little bit other than where I laid down the purple and the blue, and the violet rather. Okay, because I want to give myself um, some areas that are a little bit more dominating in blue and purple and some other areas that are a bit more dominating in the gray. And I'm leaving a few little bits of white space, okay? A few little bits of white or lighter space. So there I've covered some of the purple and blues, some of the grays, and now I'm going to just pop in some tiniest little bits of my red scarlet, that's the 118. Now, I want to, I'm actually gonna just, this I'm doing fairly light, just a few little touches, and I'm doing it on top of, and in the direction of, um, where some of my violet was laid down, okay? And I'm just doing a few little touches so it starts to give me a feel for how that will play in to my feeling in the sky. And this is one other thing I like to do is I like to pick, see this is gonna be a, what I would call the jewel color, a, like a special color that will give me a little, a nice little pop. I pick one area where there is, there was no, um, there was no violet or gray or blue and I, I lightly color that in, in my jewel color, which is my, uh, my, my scarlet red. All right, so now I've got, I've got a first layer down for these colors. Now I rotate back in again. So I come back to my, my violets and blues. And I'm going to, now, I'm, now as I color, I'm gonna go a little bit harder. I'm gonna lay down a bit more pigment. And I want to keep, I want to be keeping this, uh, uh, some of the sh some of the lines showing okay and some of the feeling of this movement and and i also um and i also want to keep so i want to show some of the lines right so i can color like here's my i've got the the like i said that i'm on the blue violet 137 and i want to show define where some of those lines are by pressing a bit harder and by um, going in between some of the lines through the sections where I laid down most of the blue and violet. So now I start to get a little bit of a, um, a, a patterning feel to my picture. And I'm not being terribly careful about coloring in and around the words and the little, the little uh, firefly guys in this picture, but 
but if I was doing this more carefully, I would. And I don't want to overdo it. I'll let myself lay down a few little lines that are darker, but then I stop again. I'm gonna go and do one more layer on, I think for some reason I'm reaching for the blue. I'm reaching for the cobalt blue, 143. And I just want to uh, reinforce a bit some of the blue color, just a little bit. And I'm going over top of a few areas where the uh, where the purple was laid in. And I may let that uh, just creep out and so, to some of the other areas, like some of the other areas where there is the gray. See, the great thing about the polychromos is they, they layer on top of one another so nicely. It's just, there's, it makes such a difference, I find, having um, the, the quality of, of the pigment that you get. That's what I like about them. All right, so, and again, I try not, try not to overdo things, but that, there I got a, enough, enough blue in that, I think. And I, I could play around with my other, um, with my other violet, but I think I'll leave it. I think I've got enough down at the moment. Now I rotate back to my grays, okay? So back to gray, and I've grabbed my, uh, my, I actually I should, I'm gonna grab my, my cool gray one, all right? So cool gray one, 230. And now I'm going to use it to blend into some of the areas in and around where I had put the gray down before and where I want to sort of uh, create, the, create some blending and again, reinforce uh, a little bit of this gray color so I have areas where where you see the line and then other areas where uh, it blends in together and this is where um, it's quite nice having these pencils because uh, they will blend together those colors as, as I layer in some of this cool gray one And I don't, I'm pressing harder. Um, there are areas where I will do it as a single line and other areas where I will blend together because I want both, both, um, both things to happen, both feelings to happen. Now I might play a little bit with my Cool Gray 3 if I find doing a similar thing, so blending in some areas, okay, and le letting the line show in others. And I might let that, that um, extend out into some of the areas that I'd kept quite quiet and soft, like here. So I'm really liking this area here where it's there's some of the softer, um, that red scarlet done, done more lightly. And then other areas, I'm gonna darken it down and I'm going to blend with it. And in some areas, I may let the gray come through in a more pure way. But remember, your, your picture doesn't need to be like mine. This is mine, but mine is just one way, one way of doing it. This is where the materials make such a difference because it's, it's, it's how you like to play with the actual material in addition to not just how, like just how you color. So. See, now I'm getting both effects. I'm getting blending, and I'm also still seeing the line. All right, this is looking quite good. Now I just want to um, come back to my Scarlet Red, and I'm gonna go a little bit harder, and I'm going to do this in some of the areas, I think, where I have my, uh, where I have a lot of my violet. Where I have a lot of my violet, so it starts to warm that up a bit. And also, so I don't like the color to feel alone in a page. And this is why I like the uh, layering and the blending is that uh, then I get, I get a really good harmony through my picture. Maybe a few little sections where I let some of the lines show stronger. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now, um, 
So the, the next stage that I would do, come back to my purples and decide, do I need to reinforce that color? Do I feel like I want more violet? Or do I want to calm it down more? Do I need to do more of my uh, grays? In this case, I'm actually gonna come out, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the cobalt blue. And I want a few more areas where I blend it in a little bit more softly. And I'm doing this because I, th I think it's because I've got this um, scarlet red that I naturally want to uh, bring in that complement of a bit of the blue. And then I can start to find some areas where I want to just deepen the color. Maybe like, you know, it could look, could look like quite a lovely contrast right here, right beside, for example, the moon. Because when I would come in afterwards and start coloring my moon in, you know, coloring my moon in yellow, that could look quite good. Or maybe I, you know, and now I start to play back and forth, okay? So I may grab my, my darker, this is my blue violet 137, and again, I might just like pick out some areas to just show some of this, show some of this line. And I balance out areas of blending and areas where I show just a few touches, I keep some touches of the line to keep that, to keep that movement. All right, and that's that's about it. Let me see if I need any more blending gray. You know, if I decide that oh I've left too much line showing in one area, I can you know I can I can change that a bit by doing another blending layer of one of my grays over top to like make that a bit more subtle if I've overdone something. Same with you know if I've gone over one area too much in my you know say I've, I've done oh dear I've done too much violet here I've lost my I've lost my scarlet that's okay I can always go around and maybe I maybe I can pick it up you know I can pick it up in another area like oh I pick up my scarlet again and I, I, I pick another area to let that color let that color come through and this way you can keep keep blending and layering and uh, having a lot of fun with your with your colors so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you liked it, please leave a comment in the, in the comment section below. And um, if you want any more coloring tutorials, I've got lots up on my, on my YouTube and more free PDF downloads on my website. That's sarahjanevickery.com. Until next time, happy coloring everyone.